So welcome to the current talk on regulating law enforcement Trojans. So government hacking is basically the cyber utopia of law enforcement for some, and to others they still just look like criminals on the wire in the end. But Naif and Pila are going to present a more nuanced approach to the whole topic and hope we can learn from it. So welcome Naif and Pila. One, two, three, okay. So, um, we made uh, uh, those slides in uh, an hour and a an half because we were cooking pasta at the Italian Embassy, where you can all welcome to get some grappa after, but uh, our uh, comprehensive uh, sharing of the experience that we had in uh, uh, reaching a bill proposal to regulate the use of Trojan by law enforcement in Italy. And we're staying two, hour, two years of our life for nothing since uh, now everything in Italy is quite complicated, even this law. So what we want to share is uh, not just which are the juridically and technically technical aspects of the bill proposal that uh, could make a sense, but also which is the kind of process and experience that we, uh, with, that we had in doing it. First of all, we were set up uh, in a um, casual way as a team of uh, a technology uh, parliamentarian in Italy, that's also an acre from late 90s, uh, early 90s, uh, an IT skilled lawyer, and me and Pila as uh, Agers forensics a technical guy. And we're going to speak only of the regulation of Trojan by law enforcement agencies. So no uh, uses by intelligence, uh, or we are not going to speak uh, also about export control to foreign countries. A uh, specific focus on uh, law enforcement agencies. First, we want to share the difficulties that we had uh, uh, within the debate, because uh, the topic of regulating the use of Trojan have a lot of stakeholders, I mean people in and organizations interested in, that may range from civil society, different uh, uh, governmental organizations, all of the uh, IT and uh, criminal related uh, lawyer communities, the forensics communities, the prosecutors, and the government itself, it's represented also by stakeholders like the privacy ombudsman that uh, take care of privacy. So the amount of stakeholders uh, in place are a lot uh, and often share, um, I mean, most of, sorry, I'm uh, not shifting the right way. So uh, what we saw is that uh, the conversation on the use of Trojan uh, by the civil society, it's mostly focused, uh, especially because of the media hype, uh, on the use of Trojan by non-democratic government that spy on activists uh, with technologies provided by Western countries. But those are mostly used by intelligence. Uh, and the kind of uh, complexity of the topic when you approach it in a broader way and not very specific vertical aspects like uh, use of Trojan by law enforcement, a spark uh, topic of export control, human com rights compliance conversation, geopolitical aspects, technical evaluation uh, of uh, tools and detection of the Trojan, uh, well, aspects of uh, leaking and public shaming, uh, I mean, like it happened uh, to Akin Team, for example, and uh, a lot of conversation on the topic of zero day and vulnerability disclosure by governmental agencies. This is kept out of this proposal. Um, and so many times uh, we were engaging in a different aspect of the civil society to speak about this kind of topic. We also got a lot of criticism that uh, are reasonable uh, regarding the fact that what we are doing uh, is uh, pursing the legitimization of the government uh, uh, hacking. And, but, I mean, we accept that there should be many different views. And on average, we have the civil society on one aspect that say stop government hacking at all. And that's the kind of uh, campaign uh, that's, and the kind of uh, general feeling. While the government say, okay, due to encryption, we lost investigative power, now we need to hack to get it back. And uh, the different kind of requirements uh, that need to be collected uh, and put together uh, by civil society and governmental agencies and differ different players are investigative, juridical, and technical. So are very different aspects. Personally, I didn't know almost anything about uh, the Italian criminal procedural code unless uh, the article uh, related to computer crimes. Uh, now I know a little bit more that uh, I learned uh, together with Andrea yeah. uh, from uh, the lawyer. So that's kind of uh, difficult. Uh, there are 
many different point of views. Uh, there is an investigative point of view, juridical and technical point of views. The, the difficult part is that every one of these point of views uh, think uh, they point of view is uh, uh, the most important ones. So everyone say the law must be regulated by my own point of view. And they speak completely different languages. So if you st speak for, uh, to, from your point of view, a technical point of view, to a, a lawyer, they don't understand anything about technical. The, the lawyer speak with the investigator. They say, yes, you are trying to defend the criminals. Uh, you don't understand anything about investigation and so on. So it's a very difficult table. And uh, obviously, we are not counting uh, the political aspect. That's probably the worst things to have to do with a politician, uh, teach people, and explain basically how computer works. Uh, so that's the kind of uh, approach that we achieved, uh, I mean, during uh, a couple of years, I mean, going on. That's first, we defined the problem that we wanted to achieve. So that's a bill proposal and a technical regulation. Then we developed a prototype as a core team. That, in, that means a basic text of the kind of uh, patch that we need to do to the law and uh, the draft of the technical regulation that should come with it. Then we presented the, that prototype, so the text and the technical regulation draft, to the different stakeholders in order to improve and collect uh, criticism and contribution requirement. For stakeholders, we really mean from the uh, experienced and expert uh, IT lawyer, professor of law, legal of of universities, uh, but also the law enforcement agencies, the specialized unit for cybercrime, the intelligence agencies, the anti-mafia, the prosecutors, the Ministry of Justice, uh, and all those kind were stakeholders we were speaking to. We also had a meeting with the, the privacy ombudsman in order to collect from them what do they think and uh, what do they feel that this should go. Integrating their suggestion when reasonable with our principle of guarantee and safety, um, and then sharing again with all of the different stakeholders. So we iterated several times. Uh, then we arranged a, a private invite only conference uh, at the Senate where we invited the key stakeholder from the head of the Anti-Mafia Commission to the Privacy Ombudsman, uh, civil society and civil liberty groups, uh, computer forensics experts, uh, lawyers that teach uh, IT-related law in the universities, uh, to have from them to all the other stakeholders, which, what do they think about this draft of law? from their point of view, as a piece of uh, the stakeholders. Uh, with the Chapman House rules, it means that everyone can say outside what has been told in that meeting, but, but no who. one can say who said it. That's a kind of a rule of engagement for that kind of a private meeting to get consensus. Then we iterated for several improvements. I mean, I don't get in the technical aspect, but the, it it got the really important changes uh, in the good. And then we started a public consultation by publishing uh, the proposal on a forum, making some media campaign, collecting some feedback, uh, make some other small iteration. Finally, we uh, deposited it to the, uh, to the Chamber of Deputy. Um, so that's the kind of process that took uh, about a couple of years, I mean, using spare time, uh, in order to to uh, reach this kind of uh, proposal. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Italian government tried many times to propose different uh, bills. Ah. So every time uh, some people say, OK, we need to introduce a Trojan inside our, our, our penal procedure co uh, code. And every time they say, OK, uh, my proposal of bill was, yes, we can use Trojan, nothing more. So every time you need to run to Rome and say, no, is, this is not enough. So this is a very complex thing. We are working on it for um, two years, so it's better if you talk together. So at the end, you say that the political part is the most difficult one. Since they don't understand anything about technology, they don't understand anything about the implication of, from a forensic point of view, from a juridical point of view, from a technical point of view, they just want to have their own name on a new law. They say that uh, Trojan can be used. Yeah. And so we want, uh, uh, let's say, there are a certain amount of uh, even juridical experts and privacy activists that argue against uh, a law to regulate the Trojan uh, by using for, 
law enforcement, but without a law, what happened? It happened that without a law, everything is allowed with a single warrant. So it means that uh, in the criminal procedural code, there's not a written Trojan. You can use that for that kind of crime, for that procedure, following those rules. So if I am a prosecutor, I need to go to the judge and ask for an authorization that it's something to do something that the judge does not really understand what the hell this prosecutor is asking for. Because it's, there's a technical related issue and the judge follow the law. So it's an atypical tool. This is the definition from a juridical point of view. And uh, these allow a prosecutor, for example, to uh, ask for a warrant to follow a person that in the Italian, uh, by the Italian law, he can basically self-authorize himself. So he cannot self-authorize to follow a person by using a Trojan in order to collect his GPS coordinates while moving. But then, you know, once the Trojan is on the device, uh, he can collect everything. Probably he will not use those data in court, but he will be able to see. Just trash it, just don't use it as a proof. Maybe at a later stage, we will seize the device. And this is exactly what prosecutors were also doing in Italy. We know of a certain dynamics where the prosecutor used the, the Trojan during the preliminary investigation phase, because the judge easily signed a warrant on something that he didn't know anything about those computers. Um, acquired all the evidences, but uh, it was preliminary investigation. So they just closed the preliminary investigation, started officially the investigation, and seized the death notebook exactly the day, later, the day after, because they know that the evidence were on that device, but they already saw that in the preliminary investigation phase with the Trojan. In other words, uh, we have uh, a police who, who is playing uh, like an intelligence agency. So they collect uh, all the evidences, they understand where to hit, then they will go, uh, as he said, in a specific uh, uh, street in, at a specific hour, and they stop a specific car, and they found everything they want. So now everything is legal, but all the, 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 the past uh, investigation is not legal since it's acquired with uh, an, an instrument which is more related than an intelligence agency instead of a, a police corp. Um, does some technical aspect uh, is not clear because we are assuming knowledge uh, of uh, how the juridical uh, things uh, is going on? Or it's okay? Okay. Um, so, uh, then without a law, the jurisprudence, so the tribunal, the, the different courts of different level, will start writing the law on their own. For example, one case in Italy of uh, mafia-related things uh, reached the, the Supreme Court uh, in a case of mafia-related case where the Trojan was used to record the surrounding environment uh, and the defense lawyer challenged that uh, uh, it was not authorized to do so, basically, uh, because of limitation of the surrounding environment law. Uh, because the surrounding environment, I don't want to get into the technical aspect, sorry. Um, so basically, they authorized the use of Trojan to listen to surrounding environment. Prosecutors know that. All juridical magazines speak about this. Uh, the acquisition of the evidence from a prosecutor and defendant point of view have an uncertain legal status, because if I acquire uh, data from a suspect uh, and then I go in court, uh, I don't know if those data can, uh, I mean, cannot be just uh, uh, contended, because there's no way to uh, validate the way the data was acquired. I mean, we know that uh, uh, for what's related to computer and phones search and seizures, there are clear uh, custody chain and procedure for the acquired evidence to be collected with a read-only hardware and all the procedures to be followed and recorded so that the defendant can check it. That's not the case for the data acquired with the Trojan. So let's uh, now we get uh, into the proposal. We wanted to give this kind of context uh, uh, to, to better uh, phrases. First, uh, our outcome. Uh, we asked what we need to do to regulate the Trojan by um, law enforcement. First, we need to patch the criminal procedural code. The criminal procedural code is uh, the part of the law that defines which are the investigatory tools and power that prosecutors have for uh, uh, which kind of crime they can be used. Uh, used 
for how much time and how the data should be handled and if there should be some kind of notification. So it means that uh, a phone voice phone call interception is not going to be given for uh, a crime of a Facebook defamation. And uh, in the criminal procedural code, uh, it's written that. So there should be a, a proportionality between the seriousness of the crime and the investigatory power that is being used. And uh, we know that these already regulate interception of phone calls, the recording of internet traffic, following people, searching uh, a people's house or property, and seizing goods. Um, and uh, all the operational rules, uh, when in details, for example, for telecommunication interception, rely on ministry regulation, because it may need to be updated. Now, what we learned is that the jurists, uh, people that approach the law and the policy making uh, entirely from a juridical point of view, really don't like innovation within the existing code. Especially, they don't like innovation that they don't, un don't understand. So it means that the amount of modification and the wording to be done in the criminal code should uh, follow this kind of approach of minimizing the modification. Uh, because they have to review and accept it. And then there are mi the ministry's technical regulation, that uh, it's everything defined by the uh, criminal procedural code on uh, how stuff uh, should, be, uh, should be done. In our proposal, uh, we brought in the, in the bill that uh, the technical regulation must be done by the Ministry of Justice, but with binding opinion from the privacy ombudsman. So it means that the privacy ombudsman could challenge the Ministry of Justice technical proposal and uh, until it satisfies the privacy and data protection requirement defined by the law. Uh, Fabio said that jurists don't like to change uh, the criminal procedural code. So, see, uh, and this is special true when they don't understand anything about a specific technology. So every time you need to, sp to speak with them, you need to, to refer actual technology to past example. For example, if I insert a Trojan inside a cell phone, okay, and I use this Trojan to uh, check uh, GPS uh, data from this, this, uh, this device, is like when you have an agent that following uh, the, these, uh, these guys. So you can refer to the same part of the law, and probably you need to take this part on the loan and put inside the new law of the, of the Trojan. This for every single function or feature of the Trojan, you need to, to try to refer to some kind of previous analog investigation. So we need to use the criminal uh, procedural code as a library as we are writing a software. We need to touch the less code as possible. And so we went uh, referring to the Trojan capabilities of information collection uh, by uh, bringing any kind of information collection action that a Trojan can do to his existing equivalents that's already regulated. That way, min minimal modification can be done, and uh, it cannot really contested uh, because uh, they are already specifically defined for which kind of crime, for how long, and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, with uh, the bill proposal, by the law, a telephone wiretapping warrant will be required to list in a WhatsApp call because it's a voice call. A uh, remote search and seizure will be required to access file on a remote device, internet wiretapping warrant uh, uh, or recording of browsing session, even uh, listening uh, the surrounding environment, so using the microphone, that's a capability of information collection of a Trojan. Uh, it should follow the very same warrant to plant audio bug. And for GPS tra tracking, the same aspect uh, to um, follow a person. That's very important because uh, we are today one of the most uh, 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 the, the, the more important problem that uh, the Trojan have is that once on the device it can collect everything. It's the entire life of the target, uh, whatever the channel uh, is using, whatever the external information collection capabilities the device has, uh, it can be done. So we need uh, to reduce uh, the invasiveness of the use of the Trojan that need to be justified uh, to a judge. I need the photo stored on that phone. Since uh, every time now they are 
uh, try to acquire the most uh, easier uh, authorization, for example, is the one to war uh, the warrant to follow a person, and they extend this authorization to every single feature of the Trojan. Yeah, so today, uh, really, a prosecutor can just get uh, a warrant to follow a person and inject a Trojan and then make a phone call illegally, basically. Um, another uh, um, point that has been introduced by the policy proposal is that uh, a Trojan can be used only after other investigatory tool has been used. So, because uh, usually we have preliminary investigation phase and investigation phase, and you can use different kind of tools depending on the amount of uh, information that you have on the suspect during the preliminary investigation. Uh, so. Uh, what we want to prevent is that the Trojan uh, it start to be used uh, against people only because they may be, be suspect of this but have not enough evidence to say. At that stage, Trojan should not be used. So uh, uh, one of the rules in the law say that only after you tried all other tools and you need to justify that. That means uh, try to intercept a phone call, try to intercept internet traffic, uh, try to follow the person. You can use the Trojan as a last resort. Yes, and uh, furthermore, in, for example, in Italy there are a ton of different uh, um, crime about uh, fraud, uh, not paying taxing, try to evade the taxes and so on. So sometimes uh, they try to do something like, uh, I suspect that that guy is somewhere related to terrorism or whatever. They put a Trojan and they have all the evidence about uh, evading, evading tax and so on. So if you want to use the Trojan for a crime, it must be used for that specific crime and nothing else. Ah, I have a duplication. Yeah. So, um, then uh, there is a point of the criminal procedural code that will say when the Trojan uh, should be used. I mean, by which kind of crime could be used. If I say uh, a bad words to someone on Facebook and that person uh, go to the police and denounce me, it's worth to use a Trojan. No. So in the proposal, we limited the use of Trojan only to mafia and terrorism related uh, crime. But we discovered uh, quite fastly that that's a, the, the kind of... Uh, uh, investigatory tool that apply to a specific investigative investiga uh, to a specific crime it's really a political aspect that uh, we cannot rule out some proposed to use the trojan for anti-corruption but when we had the meeting at the senate the stakeholder representing uh, the, polit the the political uh, the, the mps uh, were challenging no trojan can't be used to fight corruption <laughs> okay someone uh, were uh, for pedopornography and someone for cybercrime but uh, that's a political discussion that we need to stay out because it depends really on context by context case. This is uh, something that I didn't copy and paste in the right way. And then the, the fact that the Trojan can be installed and operated only by law enforcement agencies, people. Because today what's happened? Today it's happened it's that... Uh, it happened, sorry. That the police, uh, the prosecutor, um, go to the local hacking team or uh, whatsoever and uh, ask, hey, I need to inject a Trojan uh, on there. that person. And they do a full service, like they do the open source intelligence, they try to understand, they, they, they became part of the investigation. As a private contractor, they ended up installing the Trojan and remotely operating everything that's required. Now. The law say that the police and the prosecutor can have help by private contractors, but they should oversight what they do, and they are responsible for the private contractor of operation that they engaged. But if the police doesn't have the technical skills to operate the Trojan, how can they oversight someone operating the Trojan on their behalf? So, in the law, we wrote that uh, Trojan should be installed by the police. When we met the uh, head of the cyber police, let's call it that way, uh, they say, yes, but we need the training. We need a lot of training to do that. And they say, yes, that should be the way to go. I mean, but we need to make a, a policy proposal that works. Then it creates some difficulties. We know the difficulties should be surpassed. And uh, this is uh, not a, a juridical aspect, but it's... Uh, the operational issues uh, related uh, 
to the juridical part of this proposal. Basically, one of the problems is the search and seizure. The analog equivalent of a search and seizure, uh, I mean, going into someone's house, uh, searching for stuff uh, and looking for it, uh, requires a notification to the person uh, the house is searched. Obviously, if a Trojan gets installed on your computer and the Trojan makes a pop-up, hey, from now on, <laughs> I'm going to start intercepting you, that's not going to work. Uh, there is a tool of delayed notification, because by law, at least in Italy, for a search and seizure, a notification has to be done as a right of the person being searched. They can delay up to 90 days in case of mafia. So on that, uh, that kind of problem, uh, we, we had to create an entirely new juridical tool in the criminal procedural code, because we were not able to patch the other existing information capability in order to provide uh, an explicit remote search and seizure juridical capability. There, there is an interesting aspect uh, with this approach, uh, when we approach, for example, for the messaging application, let's say WhatsApp or the email client. Now, if the Trojan intercepts email as they get sent and received, that's a real-time internet wiretapping and requires an internet wiretapping warrant. But if I wanted to collect the previously received email or WhatsApp chat, that's a search and seizure, and I did a different warrant. So, uh, that's to be considered because uh, even if uh, the Trojan can technically acquire WhatsApp stuff, the Trojan, depending uh, on the warrant, uh, should be able to intercept internet-related communication or okay. should be able to acquire evidence with a search and seizure. Uh, oh, yeah. um, well, then we discovered this kind of problem that uh, in Italy, the juridical investigatory tool to follow a person does not require a judge authorization, so the prosecutor can self-authorize, and they are abusing uh, this kind of uh, self-authorized warrant to inject Trojan in preliminary investigation phase. There is a problem, a juridical problem, for the collection of the screenshots, because the Trojan can collect the screenshot uh, of, uh, of the display, but uh, what if a screenshot uh, have an opened email that you just received, or if it have uh, uh, a photo, uh, or I don't know. A uh, previous WhatsApp conversation. So, Or your uh, open uh, Google Maps uh, interaction with uh, your location data. Those kind of data are regulated in terms of collection from other points. So now I have to say it's an open issue. The screenshots are not be properly addressed by this proposal. And then there is also the environmental listening uh, issue from a juridical point of view, because in Italy you can uh, uh, put uh, audio bug only in the place where the crime is being committed. So you cannot just plant audio bug here and there and see if something happens. But you can, can, can carry yourself, your smartphone everywhere. So you have to limit the places where the Trojan is able to listen for conversation or, or even acquiring pictures or even take a, um, perform a video. So this is quite, com is quite complicated since you need to, to, to control the GPS position of the, of the device and try to match the position with the place where the crime can be, can be done. And this is because uh, we are bringing the equivalence of analog information collection warrant, that's uh, placing an audio bug, and uh, recording audio with a digital audio bug. It should stay on the same article, and so this creates a kind of limitation. But it means that the Trojan should implement a geographical fence. If they want to audio bug my house, they need to use the GPS to know that only in that area they can leave the microphone open. Unless for mafia and terrorism, because they say that uh, because uh, if it's organized crime, it's a usual crime conduct, so you are a criminal every day, and you are conducting crime uh, every, every seconds, and so you can, uh, for that case, uh, keep it on. <laughs> then we came uh, to the maybe more uh, interesting, uh, at least uh, from a geek point, point of view, of view. Uh, the technical uh, requirements. Now, the technical requirements uh, of the bills, those are written uh, into the law, not in the technical regulation. In the technical regulation, there are the details that follow that principle that are written into the law. The first is that uh, source code of the Trojan need to be deposited to a specific authority that's already in charge for state security technologies. In Italy, it's called ISTICOM. In other countries, like in France, there is the ANSSI, and there are different kind of authorities in every country, uh, where uh, those certification bodies typically certify 
uh, international common criteria standard for uh, state security technology use, military, diplomacy, intelligence, and classified information generally related. At this point, many stakeholders say very bad words to us. Since <laughs> they, they say, yes, my, you, you are crazy. You are trying to uh, force us to reveal all, all our secrets since we are using zero day uh, both uh, a ton amount of money, we need to, to expose our injection, uh, the Trojan, and, and so on. So we talk to them and we try to um, find an agreement. So the SUS code mu mu must be deposited to a third organization that is not related uh, to the vendor and is not related to the, go the government, and everything can be encrypted and uh, will be a protocol to open the, the, the sources and to understand how to create a new Trojan just to verify all the, all the, the, the feature inside and so on. But two months just to understand and to talk and to try to find an agreement for this uh, specific point. We need to go a bit faster because we have 15 yeah. minutes, 14. Uh, so the Trojan must be verifiable with a reproducible build. And that's a kind of a technical challenge, but it could be achieved. We discussed also with the people that we know that work in uh, companies that do produce malware or the former CTO of a known Italian uh, malware provider that uh, drinking beer were suggesting a lot of things. Um, so that... Uh, the defendant need to be able, as a last resort, to uh, make the, the inspection and the reproducible, uh, the reproduction of the Trojan being used in this case. Then the Trojan must be certified. So it means that the functionality needed to pass a clear acceptance uh, defined test that satisfies those technical regulations. Um, and uh, Important, uh, every operation made by the Trojan or by the operator operating the Trojan must be logged in an integrity and uh, time-stamped way um, so that uh, the log of the operation of the Trojan uh, should be given to the defendant so the defendant technical expert can, uh, uh, in a detailed way, look that the Trojan have done only legit things and there were no suspect of it. Other uh, aspect of the technical regulation is that uh, the uh, Trojan production and use must be uh, traceable by establishing a national Trojan registry. Uh, we faced a conversation with uh, uh, people from uh, the police that were saying, I don't know if uh, uh, this other department of the anti-mafia is uh, working on injecting a Trojan of this other guy, on the same guy. Uh, and so, so we could be in a situation where I look, I'm asking it to a, 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 warrant, a warrant to inject a Trojan in a phone where there are more than one Trojan injected by other different agency in Italy. So it's a, it's a fucking mess. So in this case, we need a, a registry where to check if some other police corp is trying to inject inject Trojan in the same, uh, to the same pe person or in the same device. And the nice thing is that people from the cybersecurity cert and intelligence say yes, but it will be also useful to know uh, if uh, one of the Trojan being used, uh, I mean it's a malware or it's uh, from one of us. Uh, the, and this also enables the defendant to check that that Trojan that was used by the, uh, uh, by the court of Milan uh, uh, it's investigating the suspect, uh, while uh, if the suspect, uh, if, but if the Trojan is from the court of Rome, uh, well, then there is a procedural problem. Uh, then, other two important requirements is that the Trojan, once it's stolen, uh, shall not lower the security level of the device, so that's to protect the integrity of the device, and that the Trojans, once the investigation is finished, must be uninstalled, or otherwise, the instruction to how to self-remove should be given to the defendant. So, so it's up to the manufacturer to introduce a self-destruction that properly log the self-destruction. Um, some of the lessons we learned is that uh, first, politicians need to have a very basic explanation of how computers and network works. But something like, this is a banana, this is a computer, do you know the difference? <laughs> okay. It was very different. We found out uh, that uh, the fear that uh, someone is spying on their phone uh, usually triggers the interest in uh, regulating these kind of things. And that's available, available inside uh, during presentation to advocate for that. 
that uh, if you don't have a law, the jurisprudence, uh, some case that reach the highest court, uh, will take care of it uh, and uh, allow something, disallow something, but you don't know how it will end up. Um, and say a tons of nonsense from then, a technical uh, point of view. We also learned that, that law enforcement mostly inject Trojan with a physical access. I mean, uh, we are captured by the conversation of zero-day exploits and uh, uh, intel international uh, uh, intelligence-related uh, facts and so on. But at the local level, the law enforcement mostly access physically the device, and when they are searching to plant an audio bug or a video bug, oh, there's a computer, there's a phone. Let's also try to load the computer spyware. In other words, so you are passing the, the custom, they will stop you, they will search uh, uh, inside the, your bags and so on, and someone else uh, steal your phone and inject the Trojan. So then we also got as a feedback, uh, speaking with the uh, law enforcement and also some intelligence agencies, that uh, they consider this tool to be very unstable and inefficient because uh, of the relatively low success rate, especially since the new phone have a pin and device encryption and such. So it, end up, it end up that they are already using as a last resort tool because it doesn't work so well when a phone is protected by chance. And then uh, that uh, policy making and advocacy, I think we never done it. Uh, it's tremendously expensive and slow process. You think that uh, from the idea to reach to a point that you say, okay, it's done, then let's see how it's going on. You have an idea and some people tell you that you are a friend of COP. And the other ones say you are a privacy protector. So we are always the same, the idea is the same, but different point of view, and they say every time bad thing to us. Yeah, the, go the, the good is that you get a shame for almost uh, any aspect, but then if you engage people in the conversation, people engage. There are several open issues of this kind of uh, policy proposal that has been also reviewed by Access now, that gives uh, also some uh, hint specifically to the regulation of uh, mutual legal assistance territories. So when uh, the police of a country A ask to the police of country B, hey, can you inject a, pro a Trojan on behalf of me? or the uh, problem of uh, cross-border hacking. That's a kind of uh, legal issue. I mean, when we speak about law enforcement, so police and prosecutor, police and prosecutor of Italy can operate in Italy. So they, and what if they don't know where the target is? Is supposed the target to be in Italy so he can inject a Trojan? And what if the suspect uh, is in France? They cannot surely uh, hack uh, something in France. Uh, and this is, uh, this is uh, in theory, already regulated by the law, but there is this open point. Uh, when the police or prosecutor doesn't know where the target is, can they try to hack it or not? And that's really an open question because it fits uh, also with the regards to international jurisprudence and such. And uh, also we got a feedback uh, from uh, one of the guys that uh, it's inside the Trojan uh, manufacturing and such, that they say, you know, that doing something like that will probably create uh, a single provider of Trojans because it will increase the cost of compliance to satisfy the regulation, upload the source code, support the defendant, that you ended up killing all the competitors. And that could be uh, market-related uh, uh, things. Um, then. Is that now a law after all of this effort? Of you would say, no. short answer, no. Why? Ah. No, because uh, the parliament passed a, it's called the delegation law, where the parliamentarian vote for principle to delegate the government to write the new criminal code procedures. That's the piece of electronic document that we uh, were patching uh, by proposing a law. And so until it's not finished, uh, this will completely block uh, any uh, proceeding of this proposal. There's a point that uh, major stakeholders consider this in Italy as a gold standard because any kind of stakeholder that could have been asked for an opinion and can be a trusted party has been involved and his uh, concerns were considered. Um, the Justice Commission uh, president said that they will schedule for parliamentary activity only after the, code, uh, uh, the criminal procedural code uh, is reviewed, if and only if the government don't, don't not crash again. Because in Italy, I don't know if you know, but in Happy five years uh, we had three different prime ministers. 
Um, so what we felt, uh, speaking about this, also considering the other uh, uh, action um, uh, regarding policy making on Trojan, especially late recently, the CCC one, is that it will be required to have a sort of international standard to define policy guidelines for Trojan. Because the argument, uh, it's complicated enough that the effort uh, at a single national level is not so good. Anytime you try to share the knowledge that you acquired with someone, you find also that there are very uh, juridical, uh, country juridical specific aspects. Uh, and so there should be the need to do some uh, more research on it. Here, the talk is uh, almost finished. Uh, here are some of the resources to uh, read the text online. We wrote an article on uh, Boeing Boeing and uh, sent to Dr. Wu that uh, was so kind to publish it uh, to explain uh, to a broader international audience the kind of approach in our three-page articles. There is uh, a summary in English uh, that we have done to present uh, this kind of effort. There is the policy review made by Access Now, that's uh, such an NGO working on digital rights based in Brussels. And uh, here there are also all the other, uh, uh, pr the bill proposal, the technical regulation and so on, but unlikely all in Italian, so it needs translation. And those are the folks that worked on this uh, and uh, their related contact. Uh, so if we want, we can move to some question and answer, if I respect in the Herald uh, instruction. Okay, thank you. <laughs> There are two mics in the center, and they're open now. Sorry, uh, the microphone is Excellent. turned off. So we have a microphone. Okay, just just use the one in the back. Even this, <laughs> even this one. Stall a Trojan. Okay, start again. Sorry. What is the situation in Italy when you install a Trojan? There's a difference in Europe. In Austria, there will be a law that the law in, uh, enforcement can move into the uh, flat or somewhere else, uh, even if it's closed. In Germany, it, it will be forbidden. They must install the Trojan via malware. And in, what is in uh, the situation in Italy? Of course, it's a, it's, it's a mess. Uh, we are in Italy. So uh, the problem <laughs> is uh, that uh, I think to be one of the first people who installed a Trojan in Italy, and it was the 2004, so 13 years ago. So we are in a gray zone. They installed Trojan, they tried to, some, in some way, to uh, have a warrant to, to, to install this Trojan, but there is no law at all. So sometimes the Trojan can be used, sometimes, sometimes it can't be used. Sometimes the uh, digital evidence can be put in court, sometimes they use it to justify something to find uh, some specific evidence in the real world. Uh, and so uh, and it's uh, not uh, easy to answer to this question. And prosecutors said uh, that uh, often uh, the text for the warrant uh, is written by the provider, the private contractor that provides the Trojan, because they don't know <laughs> that much about it. Oh, if uh, this juridical... Uh, there's a question. No. no question, I, have a yes. I have a question, um, or maybe a comment. If you have a, if you have a Trojan, uh, you want to install it, and you, uh, you should co start collecting zero days. The NSA did, uh, the Secret Service in my country did, everyone collects zero days and keeps them sacred. So all the citizens are put to danger because the zero days are not uh, uh, are kept sacred. And uh, I think, therefore, we should fight for having Trojans forbidden overall and have our secret service and our police work on finding zero days and make them public 
and not keep them for themselves and use them for their Trojans. And so we should not take put effort into making a good law that balances between the needs of the police and, and uh, the privacy, but just be uh, contrary to Trojans uh, in general. Um, in my humble opinion, uh, zero day should be connected to uh, weapons. So you can't have a, wep uh, uh, a law in a, in a country when you say you can't use the weapons at all. Okay? Since they are say uh, they are useful for defense, they are useful for to fight crimes and so on. So this is the same. But we have some trouble to understand that, that is the same thing. Okay? If I'm to to telling to you, oh, Russian lost two um, nuclear bombs. Oh my God, this is so, it's a problem. Where will be uh, the, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this bomb and so on? If I'm telling you, shadow broker steal one terabyte of zero day from NSA, oh, it's just computer. But it's the same thing. So you can't. Uh, uh, write a law telling, no, you can't use zero day, you can't collect zero day. Since they, they say it's is, is useful for cyber army, it's useful to attack, at, attacking, it's useful for police, and so on. So it's the same thing as weapon. Yeah. So it should be the best thing in the world, okay? But, but it's not possible in our real world at the present. There should be a law telling that zero day must be kept secret, must be kept in, in, in a secure place. Then, in fact, all three letter agencies lost some kind of zero days that are widespread to the public. But that, that's another debate, I think. Uh, just because uh, mm, and when we, we got this feedback, uh, also speaking with uh, don't know, the, the folks of Privacy International, where we had a, cho uh, we had a chat with the guy of Privacy International and sharing this, and the zero day and vulnerability disclosure process uh, was part of the conversation. The issue here is that uh, it's not the place, it's not uh, the kind of uh, law where to put uh, a kind of limits on the use, uh, uh, the use or not use uh, of, the, of the zero day. We were having a conversation with a few of the lawyers there, asking ourselves uh, how it could be possible to define a law that uh, limit and uh, the handling of zero day vulnerability and such. And every time all the discussion reached the point that we need to have liability of the manufacturer and the mandatory insurance policies, because this is the way to give the liability of the vulnerability to who created the vulnerability. That's the software manufacturer. This was, uh, but those, this is another topic. I mean, we can, if you want, uh, later on, we can have a, a conversation I would really love. There are many different opinions, uh, uh, and it's a policy research aspect. But I really got your ethical opinion that there should not be zero day, and government should fix that rather than exploit it. That's really, I mean, we, we felt the same. There are any other questions? Yes, no, maybe. No, then there's a meeting at 6 p.m. 1800 CEST, Central European Summertime, because here we're in Europe, near Amsterdam, in case you haven't noticed. It's at the Italian Embassy, which is down that way towards the woods. It's basically where you drank from this, this delicious grappa last night and then forget everything where you went. Uh, side message, still. 12 liter left. Thank you. <laughs>